Warm welcome to all of you. This is A.K. Snani from Smart VRC, and this is our webinar number 124, and the first one in the year 2022. So the topic is pretty interesting. It's time to say goodbye. Of course, we are meeting for the first time during this year. And the topic is something very different. And yes, it has to be because we are entering into a different kind of uh, different kind of cycle in terms of the business cycle, in terms of the stock market cycle, in terms of the valuation cycles also. So the estimated time is about 30 to 40 minutes. The content should be like this: getting rich versus staying rich. Then seven goodbyes and then as usual a very interacting and interesting question and answer session so starting with getting rich versus staying rich well, this is a small story there was a gentleman with the name of mr abraham he was multi-millionaire real estate developer and also, he had an interest in stock market. So, in 1929, uh, we all know uh, the great crash of 1929 stock market, especially in USA. So, this Mr. Abraham, he invested very heavily into the markets in 1929. And uh, thereafter, the market crashed. And unfortunately, he, this gentleman also disappeared. Uh, that was on October 24th, 1929. And that was because of the heavy losses into the stock market. And exactly after five days, that is on October 29th, 1929, Mr. Jesse Levomo returns home. And that day also the market crashed and uh, I am very sure many of you may be knowing this gentleman, Mr. Jesse Levomo. He has made fortune not one time, two times, but four times. But what happened really uh, finally is something like this. So on October, October 29, 1929, he returns home and his wife is very much worried because she knows that the market has crashed. So she is very sympathetic with her husband. And uh, she says that we will live a very frugal life. But Mr. Jesse Livermo, he says that nothing to be worried because I have not purchased, but I have shot it. I have sold the stocks. So we are very, very rich. And his wife says that, you mean we are not real? So that was the how opposite reaction from both of them. And in today's valuation, it was something about $3 billion he made. And uh, he said that, no darling, I have just had my best ever trading day. We are fabulously rich and can do whatever we like. So these are two very opposite type of, opposite kind of stories uh, with the same crash, one investor lost heavily, so much so that he disappeared. And another investor, he made a fortune. And then what happened? After four years, Mr. Jesse Levovo, he took his own life. So ultimately, it is very unfortunate that both the investors, they lost their lives. And that was because of the stock market. And both of them were very rich at one point of time. But staying rich is really very, very difficult and very, very challenging. So in the current stock market context, since the month of March 2020 till date, stock market is up by 120%. And many of us have made money more than 100%, maybe more than 200% also. And Earning such kind of returns from, say, a bank FD, 
is almost it will take a lifetime yes getting 100% returns and if you if you incorporate inflation into it then it is almost impossible from bank fd you cannot because uh, right now the inflation is about 5% and the returns you are getting from bank fd per year is 5.5% and you if you take into consideration the tax then on real term basis we are making losses by keeping our hard earned money into bank fd so staying in the uh, uh, staying rich in the current context is with respect to the stock market the kind of returns we have generated we should try our best to retain it staying rich is really really very very difficult so to this point even if you have not done anything if you have done if you have bought sensex or nifty index or maybe small cap index or uh, this mid cap index you must have made fabulous returns and without doing much so what happens why it is said that staying rich is very difficult getting rich is bit easy but staying rich is very difficult why because it has become our habit from last last almost 20 months market is moving in a one direction market is unidirectional and we have made very good money we all of us have made very good money and till couple of months back whatever you have purchased has gone up right and now we are into that habit since from last two months many of the investors are not getting the returns kind of returns they have generated during last previous uh, 16 to 18 months they are entering into high risk stocks yes uh, this is based on the real feedback what i get the kind of people the kind of um, feedback people give that we are entering into the stocks which are like uh, i can say like a penny stock like turn around stock and all those stories are going on and many stories are being heard and also being planted so that is how we enter into a risky zone because we are into the habit of seeing good returns in our portfolio so one thing investors must not forget is that economy works in cycles and accordingly we must understand roughly we, where we are into this cycle accordingly we should make changes in our stock changes in our weightages we should try to appreciate the kind of risk we are bearing with the stocks with the portfolio apart from the economy stock valuations also works in cycles to give you an example in the month of march 2020 in my watch list there were more than 1000 shares because all good shares came down okay uh, all quality shares were available at dirt cheap prices but today my watch list has shrunk and it is it has about 200 stocks so our watch list has come down by 80% so same is the case everywhere the kind of expected returns you had the kind of risk we had in march 2020 is very different the kind of risk we have today we are sitting at more risk yes but because of the steady rise in stock prices because of the consistent rise in stock indices investors are into the habit of believing that stock market is not risky making money from stocks is easy and that is why at this juncture it is very much important to understand how the stock market cycles work especially those who have joined 2 years or 3 years ago into the market they are not knowing that what happens at this juncture because they have not seen such kind of cycle so this where we were in 19 2019 2020 from there on we all know what happened 
uh, in the month of March 2020, stock market as well as the economy cram came down crashing, and then there was a turnaround. Of course, there was a difference in turnaround in the cycle of the economy and in the cycle of the stock market. Stock market was always always remains a leading barometer of the economy, and so a stock market turned around in the month of March, but the economy took a little more. And now we all know that we are very near to the 1920 economy as far as the economy is concerned. Our total GDP is very near to the 2019-20. And if you go by the stock market, then we all know that in the month of January, February, 2020, the stock market index, BSE Sensex, was something about 41,000 or 42,000. And today, the Sensex is 60,000. So it is already up by almost 50%, although economy is yet to catch up to those levels. So as I said, stock market is a leading indicator. We should try to correlate these things. And accordingly, then only we should select which stocks to be purchased and in how much weightage. Now, what will happen from here on, whether the economy will further move up or it will go down, we don't know, because we are at a very crucial juncture. And there are a lot of factors which will decide. And let's see what are the challenges ahead. So the first is the inflation. We all know that inflation is pretty high. And till date, interest rates were low. But going by the high inflation and going by the lot of money floating into the markets, the governments across the globe are thinking of tightening the situation, tightening the monetary policies. And so there is a likelihood of increase in interest rates. But that should not deter us because most of the Indian companies are very lightly debted. So there is no cause of alarm as such. Third is the technology. As we all know, because of the COVID, technology has leaped ahead at least four to five times of the expected time. And that gives us an opportunity also in terms of the EVs and, and AI and not many other things we are. And then comes the infrastructure. Even in US, a lot of money is being spent on infrastructure development. In India also, same thing happening, especially in the forthcoming budget, people are expecting a lot of uh, focus on infrastructure from the government. Then China plus one policy, we all know. And of course, that did not have a major impact, expected impact rather, I should say, but still impact is there. And especially in the specialty chemical sector and pharma sector, we are witnessing it. So these were the threats as well as the opportunities and no one knows where the economy is headed for. But then we know very well that stock market are running ahead of the earnings growth rate. So to give you a, some perspective about the movement of the mid cap, small caps and sensitive index, sensitive index is a broad index. It has a mix of all. So uh, from 1st of January, 2004, I've selected this date because BSC mid cap and small cap were started somewhere near to this period. So comparison would be more um, meaningful if we start from there. So during these 18 months, BSC sensitive index has delivered 13.73% returns, mid cap 13.99 and small cap 14.96. There is not much difference except for the fact that small cap has delivered about 120 basis point better returns than sensitive index. Why I am showing you this? To give you a comparison. Comparison of long term versus comparison of short term. Short term, rather I should say, a mid term. So for 18 months, returns are almost 14% for all the indices, for all the three indices. Now what happened during last one year? Yes, during last one year, BSC sensitive index is up by 25%. I should not say one year, it is one year and seven days. So in this duration, 
BAC sensitive is up by 25%, mid cap is up by 42%, and small cap is up by 66%. Now you will try to understand, you will, you will appreciate that in the long term, all these three indices have delivered the same returns. But during last one year itself, small cap is up by almost three times, little less than three times of BSE sensitive index. And even mid cap is up by almost 80%. It has delivered 80% more returns than BSE sensitive index. Now, I hope you will get an idea that why I am giving you an alarm that small cap and mid cap have become more costly, more, there is more risk in, in general, in small cap, little less risk in mid cap and little less, uh, little less risk in sensitive index. It is not little, but it is substantial. So try to understand that how you are steering your portfolio. That is very much important. Valuations play, ultimately it is the valuations. In the long run, I have told, I have shown you that all the three indices have delivered almost the same returns. But during last one year and seven days, the returns are way different for the different indices. So uh, there's a poll and a very interesting poll because when I say that you should look at your portfolio, you should look at your investment, how much returns they are generated. We must also know how to measure that. So it is a very simple poll. The best tool to, for measuring the lump sum investment performance in a year. Lump sum means you have not added anything. You have not subtracted anything. You started with say 1 lakh rupees at the start of the year. At the end of the year, you want to measure the performance. How you will do that? These are the four options. So first is percentage change, second is average returns, third is the compound returns, and fourth, maybe none of the above. So here we'll start, here we start the poll. So I see a good participation, 63%, 64% of the participants have casted their votes, votes. I request all of you to participate. It is going to be a, it is, it is going to be a very interesting one. Okay, five seconds left. So here is the result. Forty-two percent say that it is the percentage change. Eight percent, it is the average returns. And forty-six percent say that it is CAGR. And four percent go with none of the above. Okay. When we are talking about a period of less than one year, or you can say exactly one year, then it is the percentage change. If it is for more than one year, then it is the CAGR. But if it is for one year, then CAGR is also correct and percentage change is also correct. But the more correct answer is the percentage change. There is nothing like average returns because we are measuring from the start of the year to the end of the year and the amount of investment is fixed, lump sum amount. Thanks for uh, sharing your thoughts. Now this is poll number two. The best tool for measuring the investment performance for stock specific investments in a year. Now this is not a lump sum investment. Suppose at the start of the year, you invested in the month of, in the month of January, you invested 20,000 rupees for a, in a particular stock. Then on 5th of February, you invested 50,000 rupees. On 10th of February, you book profit in the first stock, something like that. It keeps, keeps on happening. And at the end of the year, you want to measure the performance. What is the right tool to measure such performance? 
where there is no particular fixed investment, but it keeps on changing. So it is on your screen. You can participate in this poll. It is very interesting. Uh, the options are average percentage change in the investments you have made, stock specific. Second is CAGR. And third is internal rate of return. And fourth is none of the above. This time participation seems to be a bit slow, but steadily it is progressing towards the percentage what we have seen in the first poll. Probably investors need more time to understand the question. Okay, uh, within next five seconds, we are closing this poll. So 78% participants have given their answer. And these are the results. 26% go with the average percentage change, 9% with CAGR, and huge 61% with IRR, and 4% with none of the above. The correct answer is IRR, that is the option C. And IRR is basically something like that. You can say that the average annualized return, average annualized return, it is not the average percentage change. So what is that basically? IRR is over a period of time, how much money you kept on investing on particular dates and then how much money you got back on certain other dates. This data you can put in an Excel and you can use a formula uh, XIRR that gives you the right answer. That is the correct way of measuring such performance. Thank you once again for sharing your views. So uh, we have completed with getting rich versus staying rich. Then what are the seven good buys? It is not, buy means not a purchase, but buy means buy buy. First, you are not comfortable. Yes, it happens many times. We are not comfortable. Uh, we are not comfortable with a stock in our portfolio. Say you have got 20 stocks. And for one or two stocks, you are always not happy. Not happy means somehow you have those stocks in your portfolio. But you are not happy with the way the company is declaring the results, the growth rate in results, or the performance of the company products in the market but somehow you are holding it in your portfolio just because, because of maybe some unknown reason or maybe because the ruling share price is below your purchase price. So for any of the stocks which you are not comfortable, we should exit. Yes. Investment should be a total peace of mind. Whole day, you should not think of about one or two stocks that what should I do regarding those stocks. Whenever you are doubt, in doubt, then it is better to get out. So good bye-bye. Number two is story is deteriorating. So first was you are not comfortable. Somehow you are not comfortable and you do not know. So say bye-bye to that stock. Second is story is uh, not that good what it was at the time of the purchase of the stock. Example, maybe you purchased some stock whose raw material was crude oil. At that time, crude oil was $20 per barrel. Over a period of time, crude is rising steadily and your stock price is not rising to that extent, then definitely it is a time to make an exit. That is how we see the story. This is the one example I have given. You can have many more such examples. Company is deep into losses. See, during last two years, yes, companies have made the losses. But if a company is already, the company under consideration was already into deep losses before the pandemic, then there is no point 
in investing in that company at the current juncture. It will take a long time for that company to make a turnaround. So next point is, next buy buy is on that only. And that is some companies have a, some temporary advantage. As I said, in case of stories deteriorating, one of these is it has got a temporary advantage. For example, in times of COVID, there are some pharma companies which were into the into the manufacture of the medicines used in for treating the COVID patients. So that was a temporary advantage. Don't think that the don't think only about in terms of the share market that it will keep on rising, keep on rising because it has kept on rising in the past. You have to look at the reasons why why that stock is rising. Okay, what was your story? Is it a match or there is some mismatch? As I said, turnaround, this is the buy buy number five. Turnaround with profit after tax way below 2019 levels. As I said, our economy is just at the levels of 2019-20 GDP levels. Even slightly, it is below those levels. So if the profit after tax is way below the results for 2019-20, then definitely it is not a cause for celebrations. Your company should have come back to those levels, 1920, at least it should have been a better than that because the stock market levels are 50% above those levels. So you should be very careful. And moreover, uh, in my investment journey of almost 30, 33 years, I have seen only four permanent turnarounds. So don't go by these turnaround stories. You will you will, you will hear lots of turnaround stories, but the real turnarounds are very, very rare. Penny stocks, yes, as I said, most of the investors who have joined late, they are not happy with the performance of the stocks during the last two, three months because there is, a, there is a slight decline in the total portfolio value because of the slight decline. And, and in some cases, there is substantial decline in the share price. And they have switched to the penny stock stories because these stories have been planted very well. And the retail investors are always attracted towards the penny stocks. And when the penny stocks also starts moving up, then more and more retail investors get attracted. I will give you an example. If I suggest you to invest in a stock whose price is 7,000 rupees, I'm very sure about 60 to 70% of the investors will not invest. If I tell you the share price is 700 rupees, then maybe 50% of the investors may invest. If I say the share price is 7 rupees, 100% of the investors will invest, almost 100%. So without understanding that what is the worth of the stock, if it is rupees 10 face value, then maybe 7,000 rupees is uh, acceptable. If it is rupees one, then it should be about 700 rupees and not 800 rupees. So you should try to appreciate that it is not the absolute price which should be the deciding factor whether you should invest or not. It should be the worth of the stock. So be very careful about the penny stocks. And I'm very sure uh, it is again a habit. Habit means if from last three months, four months, or from last one year, or maybe from last 20 months, you are investing in penny stocks and you have got fabulous returns, then you will ask me, then why should I make an exit when I am continuously making fabulous returns? Try to understand that in the long term, every share price, follows the financial health of the company in the long term. So in the short term, you may make very good returns, maybe much better than the returns made by our products. But then in the long term, we have far outperformed the stock indices. And I can say more than 99% of the investors returns because in the long term, it is the performance of the company that matters. And the last buy-buy is the stock you will not buy if given a second chance. I hope you understand this. If you are holding a stock and 
if I ask you that, assuming that you don't own this stock, will you buy it today? Maybe there is a good chance you may say that, no, I will not buy. Then say bye-bye to this stock. Also. So these were the seven good bye-byes wherein you can say Tata to the stocks in your portfolio. Because improving the performance of your total returns not only, involve, not only involves the good stocks, but also it involves the exit from the bad stocks. When I say bad stocks, means the overpriced stocks. Yeah, I would like to uh, share with you, with all of you, that we are presently offering 5% discount due to the fabulous performance for all of our products during the year 2021. And that performance I will share with you. And this 5% discount is for first 500 subscribers only. And in all probability, we are going to close this discount scheme today evening. Now, why we are celebrating the performance for the year 2021, calendar year 2021, BSE Sensex is up by 22%. Okay. Smart gains has two parts, as you all know. And the pick of the week, that is the part one, has delivered IRR of 78.32%. And I would like to inform the new investors, the new participants here, that in smart gains, it is not targeted towards any specific market cap or any specific company size. It is a mix of all, and mostly it is large cap and mid cap. And occasionally we do advise for small caps also. And IRR of 78.32% is way, way superior than the BAC census returns of 21.69%. Then in smart gains, we have a second part that is a smart billionaire picks. It has delivered returns of 56.53%. That is also way ahead of the BSC Sensex. Then we have the star performer, the best performer, that is smart multibagger, where the IRR is 99.84%. That is way, way better than the BSC Sensex returns and NSC Nifty and all index returns. Then we have free, smart freedom stocks. Here you may question that why the performance is only 42.8%. Still, it is almost 100% better than BSC Sensex. But from the name itself, you can appreciate that this basket is meant for safety first investors. And this basket is meant for only those who are investing for long term, very long term. And most of the stocks here are large caps. And then we have smart SIP. This is a very surprise. Uh, return, a very high return of 58% because this is also for the safety kind of investors. But we have here delivered very good response, um, this results of 58% IRR. Here you can see that at some places we have used percentage change and at some places we have used IRR. That is how it makes the difference. If you have a lump sum investment, like in case of billionaire, smart billionaire picks and smart freedom stocks, it is the percentage change. In case of smart multibaggers and smart gains, pick of the week, it is the IR and also smart SIP. So this was all about our performance. And we thank all our subscribers for their continued support. As good as 87% of the subscribers are our repeat subscribers. That shows the confidence and as usual, one of the participants in today's webinar is 84 years old, and he is with us from last more than 20 years. So uh, we can help you in becoming a smarter investor via stock advisory products, via Smart Insights Pro. These are videos. And also, I am author of the book, Way to Billionaire. You can purchase from our website. Also, we have financial freedom calculators, which helps you to achieve financial freedom. How to achieve financial freedom means uh, what kind of returns you need to generate, what kind of money you will require at the time of re retirement and all those things. And you can visit our website, smartverc.com for more details. 
So what are the key differentiators? Basically how we are different and better to our peers. So in my team, myself, A.K. Asnani, I am the owner, founder, and CEO of Smart VRC. I have got an experience of a stock investment experience of 33 years. Then we have our uh, Mr. Kishore Purswani. He is marketing and strategic head. He has an experience of 36 years. And then we have Madam Namita. She has an experience of three years. So that is how it. Uh, the addition of all these experience goes to 71 years. The strongest point is we have the ability to find the worth of the stock. Until and unless you know the worth of the stock, whatever you are doing is a blind game. In the long run, you do not know. And maybe you may not be able to outperform even the BSC sensitive index. And I hope uh, you all know what the CEO of Zeroda has said very recently that less than 5% of the traders are able to generate, are not even able to generate more than the FD returns. So that is the kind of statement that, that is really shocking. Uh, not for us, for all of you, it must be shocking. As long as the market is moving in the one direction, you can create good wealth. But as soon as it goes into an unpredictable zone, then it's really, really very difficult to even protect the profits. We always give a closed loop advice. If there is a buy advice from our side, then there is a 100% guarantee that we will give you a sell advice also. So it is not that a one side advice we are giving that we give you a buy advice and then you have to decide when to sell. No, it is not like that. And for even for exit also, we will give you the notifications and notification is sent through multiple channels like WhatsApp messages and email and our own mobile app notifications. Then we also give you the weightage and allocation to be made in your portfolio because if I give you a stock, which has a high risk, and I don't mention the weightage, then how much allocation you are going to make in your portfolio? Ultimately, remember that it is the total portfolio returns which will decide your wealth. So you need to understand what should be the allocation or what I say the weightage in your portfolio. All advices are given during the marketers and at the current price. We never say that when the stock declines to such and such price, then buy. Never. Whatever is the ruling price, whatever is the current price, you have to buy at that price. So there are no um, confusions or no weight. Then we have the very proven performance of 27% CAGR in SBP, that is smart billionaire picks from last almost 21 years. In May, we will be completing 21 years. Okay, with this, we come to the end of today's presentation. If you have liked this presentation, and if you are here for the first time, then you can send your name and city and WhatsApp that detail to this number. This is 9755920780. We will add you in our city-wise based groups. These are only admin based groups. And even you can suggest your friends details and send to this number. Creating wealth from stocks is simple and easy. Investors make it complex. I keep on repeating this statement because of course it looks simple and easy, but it is not. The fact is it is really very difficult for new investors. And for old investors, there are very, very remote and very, very, very few, less than 0.5 investors who can guide you that how to make it simple as well as easy. It looks simple, but not that easy. So uh, now post this presentation, we will start question and answer session. Thank you very much for sparing your valuable time on Sunday.
those who have queries they can write in the chat box or even they can raise hand through the reactions button mr nirav shah good morning sir good morning sir ha sir congratulation uh, 25th anniversary celebration ke liye thank you sir thank uh, you और सर लास्ट एक साल से आपका सर्विस यूज कर रहा हूँ वेरी मच हैप्पी जी, 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 जी ये साल ये साल भी मैंने सब्सक्राइब किया है और मल्टी बेगर के लिए भी प्लानिंग कर रहा हूँ okay. तो भी एक प्रोडक्ट लेना है मुझे लाइक सर एक क्वेश्चन था आप टाटा ग्रुप का इन प्लेट आपने रिकमेंड किया था टाटा स्टील लॉन्ग प्रो किया था टाटा स्टील किया था टी टी एम एल में आपका क्या व्यू है क्योंकि इन्वेस्टर यूफोरिया हो गया मतलब सब पागल हो रहे हैं उसके पीछे या <laughs> तो एक उसमें आपका क्या व्यू था और सेकंड मतलब आईपीओ के लिए भी किशोर सर का भी मतलब बहुत अच्छा रहता है उनका वीडियो वगैरह तो उनको भी एक थैंक्स कहना था ओके मेरे ख्याल से किशोर सर इज हियर ओनली Sorry, sir. Yes, please. Ah, uh, Mr. Nirav Shah wants to say something for you. No, Nirav Ji, I have heard. Yes, yes. I want to thank you, Nirav Ji. We have trust in you. And we will try to fill your trust with trust. Thank you, Nirav Ji. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, sir. And uh, Mr. Nirav Shah, he is here only. Regarding this uh, TTML, yes, we have advised number of Tata Group company stocks. Tata Steel, Tata Lexi. Tata Steel Long and uh, Tata Power also we recommended and Indian Autos also we recommended and that was the time when we when these stocks were available at dirt cheap prices and we have multiplied two times three times in these stocks. Uh, regarding TTML, normally we don't undertake stock specific queries, but uh, since you have asked about TTML, I would like to tell you it is not a new company; it is a very old company. and they have tried their best for giving the good performance good results but they have not been successful from last so many years so uh and i have seen very few cases wherein there is a great turnaround as i said during my presentation it is really very very difficult to provide a, a permanent turnaround and the kind of euphoria is there in ttml i would not suggest to enter at this juncture so that is my view how can we uh, okay just a minute difference between cagr and irr so in very simple words in a very simple um, in a simple way i would like to differentiate it like this cagr is for multiple years it is not for less than one year while and also cagr is for a lump sum investment and while irr yes it can go for multiple years and but in case of irr you can calculate for even for a lump sum investment but Uh, CAGR is a simple formula compared to IRR. IRR is specifically useful. Suppose I start investments today. Okay, I invest fifty thousand rupees today. After three days, I invest twenty one thousand rupees. After ten days, I book profit in the first investment. So it is very complex. And calculating returns in this way is very difficult. for each and every investment and disinvestment you have you will have to calculate what is the percentage gain and what is the annualized percentage gain instead of that there is a formula um uh, is there is a formula in excel with the name of xirr which is very simple to use and it is the same thing what is the average annualized return of your investment in in short it is like this
Mr. Guru Das, kindly unmute yourself. Uh, sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Welcome. Uh, sir, yeah. first of all, uh, I'd like to thank uh, for enlightenment of such kind of uh, information sharing uh, in terms of quality information. Sir. And uh, gives a very different thought in terms of investing. Uh, although I'm not filled it, I have subscribed your any of the product, but I have uh, attended one of your workshops and I found it is mm -hmm. very good and very informative and new uh, pathway towards the investing. I never did, uh, I never thought about the investing, but gradually I'm starting thinking about after uh, in uh, touch with you. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, earlier I was in very speculative kind of uh, guidance I was getting and I gradually thought it required some thought on. Mm -hmm. I have two questions for today's uh, seminar, and basically, I require guidance also in that. Sir, how important is uh, profit booking in any good stocks? Some because uh, is it the profit booking is very important, uh, 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 basically, the step towards in any investment in stocks. Number two question, sir. Uh, do you provide in your uh, this advisory like uh, smart gains, smart multi bagger, all this? You said that you give a closed loop advice that uh, basically target in the stop loss. Uh, but is it possible that can you include the averaging uh, information also in case of uh, a person want to invest some portion of money left for money in terms of averaging if it goes up or down? Because then the returns will be also will improve uh, uh, in a better way, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you. And uh, very good questions. <clears throat> Regarding this averaging, it is like this. Suppose if I advise a stock with a allocation of 4%, and if the stock price declines, then your weightage will also decline. And then you get an opportunity to average. And as a thumb rule, I have already uh, keep on, I keep on saying that averaging should be performed only if the share price is at least 15% below your last purchase price. That is how I arrived at this 15% is through my own experience. Earlier, I used to average for 4% or even 5% declines, but I found, I found that over a period of time, we keep on accumulating the stock and also we lose in terms of the repeated brokerage payments. And also after some time, we are finished with our free money. We don't have any more money to invest. So the best uh, trade-off rather I should say is 15%. Booking profit, yes, it is when it is ultimately you are investing for selling only and selling a stock plays a very crucial role. But we should sell if there are certain conditions which are not meeting. I, I, I would like to say like this, merely because the stock has increased by 100% in a year is not should not be the reason to sell. Merely because you want to, uh, you want to disinvest for not a, essential purpose or not a emergency kind of thing is also not a good thing to do. Merely disinvesting because your total portfolio has increased by two times in three years or two years. These should not be the reasons to sell. The reason to sell should be if the primarily if the share price is well above the worth of the stock. In fact, as it goes beyond the worth of the stock, start offloading in phases or if the story is complete maybe uh, story when i say story means um, as i gave the example of the crude oil if the crude oil was low as long as it was low it was a good opportunity to grab and hold on to such shares and keep on holding it as long as the crude oil is low so Whenever you see that the crude oil is regaining the past levels, then it is a time to sell. So there are many, many reasons. Also, if you find that for a particular sector, your weightage is going beyond 20% or 25%, then it is a call to sell at least one of the stocks, if you have multiple stocks, or reduce the weightage. So there can be different reasons, not necessarily that 
um there is one more one more uh, i can recall if you find a stock which has better prospects than the existing one then also it is a time to make an exit so you are exiting not because you don't find that that stock is not good but because you find a better stock better stock in terms of story better stock in terms of your confidence and conviction in terms of the undervaluation so there can be different reasons and ultimately yes um we have to sell ultimately we are investing because we want to use that uh wealth in times to come so that is the answer for your second first query mr vimal mr vimal kindly unmute yourself yes sir uh, hello hello sir good morning sir good morning sir i i had a chance to attend your live se seminar maybe 2 3 years back at dadar somewhere <laughs> okay and uh, i have been following your advice is given at that time okay uh, sir uh, today's one point you said no uh, that uh, to say goodbye to companies so i was just thinking that yes bank is meeting that criteria because it is very deep losses and very high equity so does it mean we should one can say goodbye to uh, yes bank that is question number 1 and my question number 2 is sir if you can uh, maybe little older issue if you can share na here itself in mm -hmm. time permits uh, of uh, this newsletters uh, at least that will create little more confidence okay. and third is if you can work out some kind of a little more heavier discount if someone subscribe to all the products 5% Uh, uh anyway is not something you know which can be considered a discount so all the products if someone is willing to subscribe for let us say one year or three years maybe if you can just work out something uh it maybe i mean if you feel like and uh, this uh, pharma sector can we say sir someone has already asked this question can we say it is now uh, it is one should uh, start exiting opportunities whatever lot of profit is happening in pharma thank you sir okay <clears throat> thanks for uh, very intelligent kind of questions rather i should say okay past newsletters we can very well share wherein uh, the targets have been achieved those stocks we can share and uh, just a week back we have shared one stock which we recommended in our uh, product smart gains and target is still live and yet we have shared that uh, and uh, that stock report can be downloaded from our website it is free it is under the under the menu known, uh, uh, of uh, celebration i would like to show you online how to reach to there so under smart academy this is our website smartvrc.com under smart academy there is a celebration and when you click to this celebration there is a here is this download report it is free for all it is in pdf format you can download this report and uh, normally we don't share our recommendations but this is an exceptional case of course i have taken note of your suggestion at least for the stocks wherein we have achieved the target we can share so that you come to know what is the kind of format in the report that we we will definitely do and regarding the discount for all the products 5% is very less uh one thing i would like to um share with all of you that i don't believe in discounts i believe in the quality i believe in how much i am paying and what i am getting and this principle i use every year not only in the pricing but also when i buy the mobile when i when i buy my 
grocery and everything if i am if i am getting more than the worth of the amount i am paying then no need for any discounts and you will appreciate that our in smart games for example in smart games we give you 52 advices 52 advices in a year and we are charging only 5000 rupees plus 18% is gst so it is less than 100 rupees okay it is 102 rupees or 105 rupees per stock not only that there is a part b with the name of smart billionaire picks wherein from last more than 20 years we are delivering 27% cagr so 27% cagr at a cost of only 5900 rupees in a year i don't think it is high uh, of course um, people ask for the discounts so we have given you the discount and this is just a way of celebration of the our performance otherwise we give discount only one or two times in a year and that is also restricted to 5% only even 10% uh, so this is the reason and regarding uh, subscription to all the products uh, yes uh, that we can consider because there is a case here in smart freedom as well as in smart sip there are uh, at least 40% stocks which are common with respect to the smart billionaire picks and at times with smart multi bagger also so therein uh, yes we can consider for a uh, there is a case for providing a kind of a discount but definitely i am not going to offer you upfront discount but i can provide you discount in terms of the uh, in terms of the one month free subscription or something like that and that we will definitely consider i i cannot guarantee you that yes we will come out with those scheme that kind of scheme but uh, we will uh, seriously consider that thank you for your suggestion mr omesh Mr. Omesh, can you unmute yourself? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, good morning, sir. Morning, uh, sir. As usual, it was a, a informative session. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my question is, uh, you you are uh, telling that you keep a watch list of a certain stocks and then yeah. you do it. Now, in one uh, of your suggestion, the mm -hmm. stock that you recommended was excellent in multi bagger. Mm -hmm. but then uh, due to some on this one the stock started going down and you asked to exit but still yes. if you see it was a, such a wonderful uh, stock now uh, after that you do any analysis of that so why it went and then you move it to your uh, watch list so that you can again do it how, how does it work sir okay uh, one of the reasons of exiting from a stock is if the market is stable and the stock under consideration is falling consistently and steadily it is falling down then of course we do not know the reason why it is falling but we believe there is a reason there is some reason there is some news which we are not aware of but smart investors know that when i say smart means you know very well when i say smart yeah. means insiders so if they know something more than us then we can't help it and uh, in that the stock what you are referring to it was down by about 25% with respect to the market and so that was the reason why we exited otherwise everything was perfect everything is perfect in that stock yeah and that is why we exited that is the only reason so sir, do you uh, do an uh, this one sir uh, move again to your watch list then again look into that and then come back like how do you track that so many uh, shares are like 1200 stocks uh, keeping track of it their performance it's a huge task right yeah uh i will give you an example it is not that we are daily tracking 1200 stocks in fact um i spend about hardly 2 hours or 2 and a half hours of uh, regarding the company developments and all those things in the month of uh, in the month of april may june 2020 i said there were about 1200 stocks in our watch list the reason was that you uh, suppose there is a there is a bsc 100 index is there almost more than 90% of the stocks were proven blue chips and they were available at throw away prices uh, to give you an example in january february 2020 indian hotels was quoting at 140 rupees 142 rupees 
and by march end and april beginning the stock was around 60 rupees so it is a just a i use just a common sense that there is a tata group company suppose i ipo comes at this juncture from a tata company and he says that we are giving we are going to create some international uh, chain of hotels at a price of rupees 60 will i subscribe yes why not and this is an exi- existing company with such a huge chain so there is no need to look for the fundamentals or no need to look for the financials just simply because there is a fear grip into the market this is the time to buy such stocks so there are lot many such stocks in our watch list which traditionally are not in our watch list to give you an example like pedilite industries there are many many stocks even tata power tata power came down to i believe up to rupees 30 there are many stocks so it is not that we were watching all those stocks it was a very kind of a common sense that these are the blue chips and these are all over at throwaway prices keep them in the watch list like this now presently we have about 175 to 200 stocks and of course all those stocks are not worthy of investment at the current price we are just they are very close to our the valuation uh, the worth of the stock and as and when those stocks fall below the share prices fall below the worth of the stock we recommend in the uh, appropriate product so i hope i answered your query uh mr ajay gupta ji i am really very sorry because of your background <laughs> i was not able to see your uh, that symbol <laughs> good morning and good morning, you good congratulations for your excellent presentation and these anniversary celebrations thank you thank uh, you so i have been associated with you for about i think 10 years but i have never invested in a ipo okay i have always said goodbye to ipo okay <laughs> uh that is very good because i also don't invest in ipos <laughs> yeah because there is so much hype all around uh, we are investing we are investing so i feel tempted but i have still resisted the temptation okay that is good anything uh, you would like to share or any suggestion or anything uh no i think uh, but once the ipos has settled down like say nike or ptm and now the actual valuations are available to everyone mm-hmm. so what do you think then we should review these uh, ipos who had come and been prescribed and uh, people have already now come to know what is the future mm-hmm. okay oh uh, for that we are planning for a very separate a very independent webinar because lot many queries come and uh, we have not recommended i think uh, <laughs> any of these ipos and even after post listing we have not recommended any of these uh, ipos and there are reasons for that um, the most prominent reason is these are still these are very small companies and there is a stiff competition in the market even for say you um, you said about the ptm now there is a it is not that ptm is alone in the market there are strong competitors very strong competitors with this model i don't think ptm will ever come to the profits it will have to change its model and when it will change and how much profits will come it is really very wide guess to be made and even if those who think that yes uh, they have the confidence in the management or in the ceo or anything or the model business model they can wait they will get good opportunity to buy at lower prices not only i am not uh saying very particular to ptm but or to all these new age technologies and uh, as you also know lots of uh, lakhs of new investors have joined during last two years and most of these are new age investors they are not much conversant with the uh, how the stocks move what they have seen is only a one way journey if i say zomato they what they know is zomato gives food delivers food at a good concession but if you ask them what is the sales of zomato or what is the profitability of zomato or how they see that zomato will come to the profits i think it is very difficult for any retail investor or new age investor to explain you uh, but what they say is yes they have the confidence it is like this moreover uh, similar similar companies which are 
listed in us they are available at much less valuations so uh, one of the reasons is because we have got only limited uh, such companies listed on our exchanges and people are buying them and that is why we are seeing stretched valuation so uh, we should wait patiently for that and still as i said i don't believe that uh, i don't think that the scale is such a high that they can sustain uh, and they can come to profits but uh, of course people can say that yes we are making profits so why not we should continue but that should not be the reason uh, always you should look for why you have made the profits what your company has grown how your company has grown what are their plans so that is the best way because i always look for first the risk what is the risk involved and then think of the returns and in most of the cases rather i should say in 100% of the cases you must have observed that we never recommend any loss making company so that is my first principle yes and uh, can you please post some kind of synopsis on various brokerage firms which are which are good firms where we can have an account demat account like the comparison of the costs and various brokerage firms okay uh, since we are only we are very strong believer of uh, long term investment or medium term investment and the brokerage is hardly 0.3% or 0.4% so for me what matters more is the services provided by the brokerage firm rather than the how much the brokerage is there if someone is giving me a free means there is no brokerage and there is another but the services are poor and there is another company which is charging me 0.2 0.3% brokerage charge for delivery then with excellent services then i would go for the second one because right. when i am targeting 30% returns in a year for me 0.2% or 0.5% hardly matter so uh, that is from my opinion but it may vary from person to person no yeah, that's fine right. yeah yeah because you should be comfortable with dealing with somebody yes yes you should be comfortable in every aspect as i said one of the bye bye is if you are not comfortable with a stock then say bye bye <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank you so much congratulations okay. once again thank you thank you sir thank you okay um the yeah, rest is rest is all uh, applause for us uh one very good feedback i really like the weekly smart gains magazine i miss the magazine format ah uh, yes that is uh, earlier we used to come out with a physical copy but now with the changing technologies uh, we have also moved uh you can take the print out if you if you want to read in that format that is what best i can say and mr arun singh thank you for session it is extremely informative your knowledge and inputs have helped me immensely thank you mr arun uh, mr shrikant he is our regular um, participant wonderfully explained sir thank you great explanation mr prabhat vyas so this is all about the today's presentation i thank you once again to all of you for sparing your so valuable time being a sunday and have a good day thank you